This is Postal Union with a personal greeting from Mr. and Mrs. James Travers. Twas 50 years ago today, you said love, honor, and obey. A union half a century old must surely have been wrought in gold. The message is signed, Harry. If you think I'm going to put up with this any longer, you're crazy. Oh, I'm crazy now. Who says you're crazy? You did. I did not. I simply Shut said... Shut up. Hello? This is Postal Union with a personal greeting from Mr. and Mrs. James Monaco. Now that you are man and wife, I wish you joy in married life. I'm sick and tired of this continual fighting. What? You There's what nothing quite you so like sweet it. as you know this. Yes. The joy that comes with wedded bliss. Don't you dare do that! Don't you dare! Here's your man, Mr. Barrett. Uh, Denny, hmm? our friend Mr. Barrett wants you to sing a birthday greeting to his father. All right, what's, uh, what's the telephone number? No, no, it has to be sung in person. What do you mean, tonight? Well, it'll have to be tonight. His birthday is over at midnight. Well, can't somebody else handle this? I got a date tonight. For Mr. Cyrus Barrett Sr., your date will have to wait. Now, look, here's what I want you to do. You go to this address, and you sing happy birthday to my dear old father. Mm -hmm. Now, don't let anything stop you. You just go right in and sing it to him. Tell him it's from his loving son. Is it OK if I uh, stop for a few minutes on the way? Yeah, but don't be too long. All right. Oh, and listen. Mm -hmm. Listen, when you sing, give it out good and strong with feeling. You sure you wouldn't rather have me sing Sweet Adeline? No, 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 no. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. OK. Sometimes I feel like a cross between a nightingale and a carrier pigeon. Mm, me, 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 me. La, 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 You know, this is going to be very good. Yeah. My father hates music, and he particularly hates singers. <laughs> It'll be funny, won't it? Very funny. <laughs> just a thought, that's all. <laughs> just a thought. <laughs> Mr. Robinson, please. Hi, Denny. Hello, small fry. How's everything? Okay, how are you? Oh, can't complain. Can't complain. What's doing, Gate? Oh, fine, Denny. How's it with you? Oh, can't complain. Can't complain at all. Hotel Raleigh. I'll get him for you. Are you new here, or am I being too fresh? No to the first question. Yes to the second. Your face is very familiar. Have you ever been to Atlantic City? Have you? Yes. Then I haven't. Hmm. What do you do with your evenings? Some I spend, some I pass. You know all the answers, don't you? I should. I sit here all day. Hotel Raleigh. Girlie, you're much too beautiful to work. Now, if you'd only listen to me, you could loll around all day on a velvet couch, eating bonbons until you got as big as a house. <laughs> oh, Denny, you're such a fool. Rat discovered. Hotel Raleigh, I'll connect you. Why the official chapeau? Postal Union brings you sad tidings. Oh, not overtime again. I won't be long, though. If you'll just pull in your belt for an hour, we could still have my bachelor dinner together. Are you sure you don't want to spend the evening with Nicky and the boys? Oh, I'm positive. I know all their jokes by heart. Besides, I want to have one last dinner with you while we're both single. Oh, Danny, I can hardly believe it's true. Oh, it's true all right this time. There's the license. Don't lose that. Oh, no chance. It was right in the vault with the rest of my important papers. Hotel Raleigh. Thank you. Uh, so long, dear. Mercury flies on winged feet. <laughs> <laughs> I used to pose for bookends. <laughs> Are you uh, happy, honey? Very happy. Is uh, he one of the reasons? He's all of the reasons. Hotel Raleigh. Do my sensitive ears detect again the distant chime of your wedding bells? Yes. It's all set for tomorrow morning. Congratulations. If I remember correctly, this is the third time my congratulations have been premature. Fourth. Only this time it's really going to happen. I see. And uh, may I tell my radio audience what the charming bride is wearing? Oh, wait till it's over. Then I'll tell you all about it. If you do, it'll be the first thing you've ever told me. You know, Mary, if you wanted to be nice, I could write half my broadcast from what comes over your switchboard. 
My business is connecting people, not separating them. Hotel Raleigh? <laughs> That's a very good line. If you listen tomorrow night, you'll hear it. By the way, why don't you drop down to one of my broadcasts? Then we can come back here to my apartment and have a bite of supper. Oh, I'd love to. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Only I don't think Denny would like your apartment. I see. Well, I'll keep trying. You have the wrong number. Postal Union. I have a personal greeting for Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett is engaged at present. You'll have to wait. Why, Denny! Mona Parker. I had no idea you listened. I'll talk to you later. Ah. Sit down, Mona. You know my attorneys, Mr. Fisher, Mr. Loftus? How do you do? Yes, we've met. Mr. Barrett tells me that you've decided on a trial separation from his son. Yes, I have. Well, perhaps you're right, Mona. I admit Silas has behaved very badly. Drinking and running around. May I point out, Mr. Barrett, that you're responsible? I beg your pardon? You've tried to run our lives as well as your own. And it just hasn't worked out. Well, I meant well by both of you. If Cyrus loves me, he'll come to his senses and straighten himself out. And if he doesn't, well, then we just don't belong together, that's all. That's certainly a reasonable way of looking at it. What's happened between you two is no business of mine. I'm only concerned with one thing. I know what you're going to say. If I leave my baby here, you'll offer me a settlement. Is that right? <laughs> I knew you were a smart girl. You're doing the proper thing in considering the welfare of your child first. I know it. That's why I'm taking him with me. You will do as I say, if you know what's good for you. Of course, you know there are legal means by which Mr. Barrett may obtain custody of the child. I'm warning you. You better accept a settlement. I've supported myself before. I can do it again. You've no right to deprive that child of the things that I can give it. There's one thing you've forgotten. I happen to be the child's mother. I think she's absolutely right. Who are you? Well, I'm uh, Denny Martin, Postal Union. Well, what do you want? Well, I, I have a personal greeting for you, sir. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear father. Happy birthday to you. Signed, your loving son. Get out of here. OK. But I still think she's right. Go on! Get out of here! Well, I'm going. I can take a hint. Get out of here! Hello. Hello. Who's it? Mickey. What do you want? Orange juice, ham and eggs, toast and coffee. Okay. Hello? Hello, sleepyhead. This is the bride. Oh, hello there, earlier than me. I'm down at the corner grocery store. Mm-hmm. Is there anything special you and your little roommate would like for our wedding breakfast? Look, honey, why don't you surprise us this morning? All right, I'll surprise you. Now, you put the coffee on, I'll be right up. It's practically boiling. Hurry up now. OK. Come on, Tavaric, get off that cloud. This is my wedding day. Come on. My horse wins and pays 50 to 1. And before I can collect the money, you wake me up. What's the difference? You'd have lost it back in the next race anyway. That's the trouble with you. Your dream horses are all nightmares. Mm. Nice looking pair of pajamas for a best man. Say, what are you beefing about? Since when does the best man have to wear fancy pajamas? The very idea. Best man. That's silly anyhow. If the best man is the best man, why does the bride marry the groom? Hey, you've been drinking my hair tonic again? <laughs> ah, you lovely little scallions. Someday you'll grow up to be big, strong onions. Ow! Ow! 
Denny, my garden is getting beautiful. I love gardening. There is nothing like getting close to the soil. A garden does something to me. Say, Nicky, how's your garden? Do I have to go through all that again? Well, that must be Mary. Let her in, will you? Yeah. Ah, Mary. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Isn't this a perfect day for a wedding? Mary, I hate to tell you this, but last night I cast your horoscope and the stars are against you. What kind of nonsense is that? It's not nonsense. Look, you are Sagittarius and Denny is Libra. Now, it just happens that the moon is in mid-heaven and Mars is in the ascendant. That part is all right. Well? But the trouble is that today Pluto is in conjunction with Uranus. Oh, what does all that mean? That you should postpone the wedding. Mars and Uranus he can push around, but never fool with Pluto. Why don't you ask the stars when you're going to get a job? Well, I did, and they told me not to even try till 1942. Well, that's not so long. Hello, Mary. You look swell. How can you tell? You can't even see me. Who has to see you? You always look swell. Flatterer, I bet that's what you say to all your cooks. Hey, Nicky. How about plucking a few of your chives for the scrambled eggs? Oh, my little chives. They're so young. Well, they'll never be any younger. Кашуя, кашуя, лукочки, а в сердце тоска и печаль. What is that you're singing? The Russian harvest song. Honey, there ought to be a girl like you in every kitchen. That's for free. And very good, too. What are you featuring here this morning? Scrambled eggs and chives. Ah, wedding breakfast fit for a king. Thank you, Your Majesty. Will you pour? A pleasure. Ah, oh, this is for me, the old domestic life. I love it. If I were a dreamer, Mary, do you know what I'd dream about? No, tell me. A little place out in the country with about two acres of ground. Room enough for some chickens and have a big dog, maybe. Right in the middle of it, the kind of a cottage you read about in storybooks. Oh, Denny, that sounds lovely. I think we'd all be very happy. <laughs> no, well, listen here, Tovarich. When Mrs. Martin and I return to the estate after the wedding, it won't be a bachelor's apartment anymore. You catch on? I think I understand. Here's to the bride and groom. May all your little ones be troubled. Oh, no. I haven't any troubles. I'm healthy. I'm happy. I've got a wonderful girl and a wonderful job. Uh, will you pardon me, please? Telegram for Mr. Denny Martin. That's me. Thanks. You're welcome. How about this? Somebody sending us congratulations even before we're married. Oh, Denny, I hope you didn't forget to tell the boss you want the day off. Looks like I won't have to ask for the day off. You won't? Why not? I'm here, honey. You better read it. Oh, Denny. I told you that'd get you into trouble. It's a fine sense of humor, huh? The fella fires you and sends it on a greeting blank. There, you see? That old devil Pluto. Every time you try to help somebody, you get it in the neck. Oh, it's all right, honey. When Mona was on the stage, she tried to get me a job. She's a good scout. I'm glad I did what I did, but... I guess I just got carried away, that's all. I understand you meant well, Denny. I just feel badly because we have to postpone our wedding again. Why? You know we can't get married unless you're working. Be practical. Oh, I'm tired of being practical. I want to get married. I wish you two would make up your minds. From unpacking and packing, my clothes are getting all worn out. Search for solace in a sad and somber song And delve into the depths of that dominion While others thrive on things that terrify the throng I guess it's just a matter of opinion Cause I say sing a song of sunbeams 
let the notes fall where they may Sing a song of sunbeams in a light, fantastic way Show the blues you're busy, that you just can't be annoyed And they'll up and go, cause they know they're null and void People all are suckers for a grin You give out, they're gonna give in Love a jolly jam. Come on, get out. They might even make you president. Why don't you sing a song of sunbeams? Let the notes fall where they may. Sing a song of sunbeams in a light, fantastic way. Life is never perfect, but it isn't always wrong. So the only thing to do is sing a sunbeam song. There we are. Uh, how much is that? Oh, there's no charge, madam. No charge? This is a new service of the Sunbeam Cab Company to promote goodwill and increase business. If you liked it, please tell your friends. Well, I never heard of such a thing. <laughs> well, it's a new idea, you see. Catching my cab is like grabbing the brass ring on a merry-go-round. You get a free ride and music with it. I think it's wonderful. Isn't it? And I enjoyed your singing very much. Thank you. Uh, have you ever heard Martinelli? Oh, yes. Of course, he's good, too, but uh, he hasn't got a cab. <laughs> How's the voice with the smile? Don't change the subject. What subject? The one I'm thinking of, silly. How's the new job? Oh, it's great. Knocked out 26 miles, 84 courses, and two high finishes today. Oh, I hope it lasts. <laughs> I hope my pipes do, too. It's really wonderful, though, honey. I've stepped up in the world. It's not a job. It's a position. I sit, I ride, and I sing into a real live audience. Yeah, but not to more than four people at a time. Well, it's still better than singing into a telephone. At least they can't hang up on me. That's progress. How much more money are you getting a week? You know, honey, this is the first real chance I've ever had. How much more are you getting? Over two million people a day riding taxis in this town. Just think of it. The chances are two million to one in my favor. Just a minute. Are you going to tell me how much more money you're getting a week? Well, it's not exactly more. It... Oh, you're getting the same salary? No, no, not exactly the same. How much? Well, it's two dollars a week less. Two dollars a week less? Oh, you are stepping up in the world. Two more steps like that and you'll be right at the bottom. Well, anyhow, it's a job and we can get married tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's Friday the 13th. Well, Saturday morning then. We'll have the whole weekend for a honeymoon. Let's make it Saturday night after work. We can use that extra day's pay. Oh, there you go again. Putting money ahead of romance. Well, you know what happened the last time you asked for the day off. That's history. Oh, look. Isn't that sweet? Oh, Denny, do you think we'll ever save enough money for a room like that? Who wants a room like that? Can you imagine me in a bed that size? <laughs> Look at that cute little chair. And the wallpaper. Of course, we'd have to put something in the corner. Mm, that looks like a perfect spot for a bar. Oh, what do you know about babies? I know a lot about babies. Matter of fact, I used to be one. Sometimes to hear you talk like that, I think you don't even like them. Of course I like babies. I like horses, too, but <laughs> I wouldn't want to live with one. Besides, what's so wonderful about having children? A fellow and a girl get married and they have a baby. They give it all their attention, make a lot of sacrifices, the baby grows up, marries, and what have you got left? Just a few faded photographs of that day at Coney Island. No good. Your father wouldn't like to hear you say that. My father is the one who told me that. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. Well, my mother told me different. <laughs> of course she would. Oh, wait till you're pushing your own four-wheeler through Central Park. You'll sing a different tune. The only four-wheeler I'm going to push will be that cab of mine if it breaks down. That's telling her, buddy. The voice of experience. <laughs> well, there you are. Now, look, Nicky seems to be doing a good business tonight, huh? Well, then, let's get out of the way. Let me take a look. Where is he? 
Well, look. <laughs> hey, Copernicus, wake up. Come on in. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's the matter with you here? You're losing a fortune. Everyone's taking a free look. They can put their look in this end, but from this end, and don't come out. That's <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, Nikki, what's this? What's the idea? Why'd you cut your price in half? Tonight is only half moon. <laughs> well, pack up the stars and the moon. Let's go get something to eat, huh? Why should a man eat? To live? Why should a man live? <laughs> Order me the same as you. Well, what's going on here tonight? I don't know. Mark Kelly's never had music before. Ah, sad music. It's like Russia. Now I can be depressed while I eat. <laughs> oh, hello, children. How's the crusading troubadour tonight? The cruising troubadour, Mrs. Kelly, and he's doing all right. I see you've kind of gone musical yourself. Oh, that? Why, that's one of them society playboys on a toot. He's feeling terribly sorry for himself. How do you like that? He carries his own band to a restaurant. That's so the band can carry him home. <laughs> What'll it be tonight, kids? The daily special? That's right. One of Mrs. Kelly's mighty hamburgers. Pitch till you win. Ha <laughs> ha, then it's practically here. With the sun and moon in Gemini and Jupiter at midheaven, Mercury looks at Saturn, and the first race is at 2 o'clock. Now, if the moon was in Scorpio and Saturn in conjunction with the sun, how can the second horse lose? Hello, Nikki. Ah, my angel. Oh, romance? <laughs> no, finance. He wants Mamie to invest her savings in his system for betting the races. There goes Mamie, out of the frying pan into the bread line. <laughs> That's great. Play it again and again and again. Say, wait a minute. Haven't you had enough sad music? Let's play something else for a change. Oh, hello there. Say, that's young Barrett. The man who had you fired? No, his son. You see that? Sure, I see that. Do you know what that is? A match. No, no, no. What's the Statue of Liberty hold? Why, a torch. That's right, and that's what I'm carrying. <laughs> the white man's burden. Hello, Mr. Barrett. Ah, my Postal Union friend. Hiya. Hiya. I'm fine. That's good. You know, I lost my job last night. Oh, that's bad. But I got a better one this morning. Well, now, that's good. I'm going to get married Saturday. Oh, uh, that's bad. Hey, wait, wait a minute. I want you to meet Miss Wilson. This is the young lady I'm going to marry. How do you do? Now, that's good. Say, Mr. Barrett, could I speak to you for a minute? Now, you can stop me if you've heard this. Oh, you got a new story? No, no, it's an old story, and you've probably heard it before. But here's how it goes. Most scientists agree that one of the few things that can't be preserved in alcohol is a happy home. Oh, I get it. As a matter of fact, I've come to somewhat the same conclusion. Lori wants a few more drinks and a few more tunes to put out the torch. Play, boys. Now, you're never going to put out the torch with the kind of music they've been playing. That's right. Denny, you give him something lively. Cheer him up. Now, listen, Mrs. Kelly, I park my voice when I park my cab, but if you think it'll do any good, I'll break down. Why, sure it'll do him good. All right, boys, right after lunch, play Hickory Limb. Okay, buddy. You started, Joe. We'll meet you at the chorus. You know, I was looking through a book of old quotations, and I came across the subject of romance. When the poets and the sages wrote the wisdom of the ages, they gave the lover only half a chance. For every bit of pleasure, there'll be pain. If you feel that's no bargain, then abstain. Hang your heart on a hickory limb when love is passing by. Then you won't know the sadness in a sigh. 
Hang your hats on a hickory limb when spring is in the air. Then you won't be a victim of despair. You can laugh at sweethearts who sorrow and swoon. They're so romantic, they trusted the moon. Hang your heart upon a hickory limb, lest you feel like me. That love is worth the trouble it can be. Hang your heart on a hickory limb when love is passing by. Then you won't know the sadness in a sigh. Hang your heart on a hickory limb when spring is in the air. Then you won't be a victim of despair. You can laugh at sweet hearts who sorrow and swoon. They're so romantic. They trust. Unless you feel like me, that love is worth the trouble it can be. Hang your heart upon a hickory when love passes by. You want no sadness, won't sigh. Hang your heart upon a hickory stick. Spring is in the air, we're so happy when skies are blue and spring is making me care. That was a real tonic. This is positively my last bender. And tomorrow, I'm going to some health farm and get a lot of good fresh air. Now you're talking. Hello, Mr. Barrett. Well, I've been looking for you all over town. Is that so? Well, you found me, so what? Your little domestic squabble is going to land you in the headlines. I thought I might be able to present your side of the story. Don't be so good to me. Oh, 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 oh. it isn't a question of being good to you, my boy. After all, your father is my sponsor. I'd like to do him a favor if I could. Now, uh, what is to become of your wife and baby? Why don't you talk to your sponsor? He's arranging everything. Well, I can see we're not getting anywhere. So I guess I'll just have to do the best I can. Good night. Ah, my siren of the switchboard. Are you happy, honey? Why don't you go play with your microphone? There speaks the voice of love. And a wiser man than I once said, love is intoxication. Marriage, the headache, and divorce, the aspirin tablet. 
<laughs> uh, I beg your pardon. You fascinate me. Would you mind telling me what is your birthday? Why, not at all. According to the annals of the DeWolf family, I entered this Vale of Tears one bright April 25th. Just as I thought, Taurus the bull. <laughs> Only thing to do is sing a sunbeam song. How much, please? Oh, no charge, madam. Good old sunbeam service. Oh, well, then I'll have to give you something for yourself. Hey, Denny. Huh? I thought you weren't allowed to take tips. Yeah, the customer's always right, you know. Taxi, please. You wait just a minute, please. There's someone else coming. Certainly, ma'am. Go to the Federal Broadcasting Station, please. Yes, ma'am. This will come after the first commercial. Manhattan Heart Drops, colon. The hurrying homeward throngs on Fifth Avenue yesterday afternoon. What was that last? Fifth Avenue yesterday afternoon. Yes. Were uh, not disturbed by the somewhat ordinary spectacle. Uh, in a light, fantastic way. You show the blues you're busy, that you just can't be annoyed. And what did I just give you? Somewhat ordinary spectacle. Oh, yes. By the somewhat ordinary spectacle. People all are suckers for a grin. Just a minute, please. At the risk of being rude, could I ask you to postpone your vocalizing? I like singing, old boy, but not while I'm dictating. Listen, Mr. DeWolf, this would be a better world if there was more singing and less dictating. To the readers of the Daily Press, a word of advice. Do not be misled by the garbled accounts of the impending separation of the socially prominent Cyrus Barrett's Jr. Some of my less accurate colleagues have given unfounded reports of this separation, which, believe me, is an amicable one. This was confirmed only last night by none other than Cyrus Barrett Jr. himself, whom I interviewed in a lesser-known eatery, despite the vocal interruption of one Denny Martin. Uh, Martin is my candidate for public nuisance number one. He is a sunbeam cab driver who adds to the hazards of traffic by singing to his passengers. <laughs> if they must pass laws, why not pass one against cruising troubadours like Martin? And that fearlessness must satisfy your news appetite for the nonce. Denny, please don't be upset by what he said. Oh, I'm not upset. Every knock's a boost, you know. Yeah, I know. A and, and it doesn't matter what anybody says about you as long as they spell your name right. Yeah, that's right. You pretty finished, honey? I got about two more hours of cruising. And furthermore, when, when a man as big as DeWolf even mentions your name, you never can tell what'll happen. Yeah, that's just what I'm afraid of. I'm sure, Mr. Barrett, everything is going to be all right. I hope so. Mr. Lofter. Good evening, Mr. Barrett. Good evening, J.F. Ah, Lofter, did you get that order? Indeed, I did. Now, this is a temporary order, placing your grandchild in your custody pending the court hearing. And this is another temporary order, restraining Mrs. Barrett from removing the child from the jurisdiction of the court. That means, of course, that she can't take it out of the state. That's fine. Give yourself a brandy, Lautus. Thank you. Well, let me compliment you gentlemen on the way you handle things. Everything's working out as I planned. So far, so good, eh? <laughs> Mr. Barrett! Mr. Barrett! What is it? Oh, Mr. Barrett, it's terrible. I don't know how to tell you. What's happened? The baby, it's gone. What? I was only out of the nursery for five minutes. I went downstairs to the linen room. Where's Mrs. Barrett? I don't know, sir. Oh, I'm so upset. Lord, uh, if that child's gone, somebody will pay for it. Now, take it easy, Mr. Barrett. You don't seem to know what this means to me. I understand perfectly. Well, I soon find out what's been going on around here. It's really not my fault. Oh, shut sir. up. Maybe Mrs. Barrett took the baby out for a walk. Walk? The baby's only ten months old. Go over the entire house. Search everywhere. Don't excite yourself, Mr. Barrett. I'll never forgive myself for this. Gone. The baby's gone. Impossible. We have a court order. If that woman's responsible, I'll have her put in prison. Murder! Murder! She's taking the baby. She found out what we were going to do. 
I'm not going to let her get away with that. Pardon, Mr. Barrett. Might I make a suggestion? No, you keep out of this. Now, listen, J.F., I'll call my friend the commissioner. No, no, Arthur, that's not the proper procedure. No, keep quiet, all of you. I give the orders here. Now, here's what we've got to do. First, the police mustn't be told a word. There's to be no scandal. Higgins, see that none of the servants leave the house. Very good, sir. Get the best detective agency in town. Tell them to spare no expense and put on every available man they have. I don't care what it costs or how they do it, but they've got to find that woman. Hello, Sunbeam Cab Company? Could you tell me where I can get in touch with Denny Martin? Yes, you're cruising Troubadour. That's pretty hard to say, lady. You might try the fry and pan restaurant. Denny hasn't been here tonight. Why don't you try the Hotel Raleigh? If you come up here and wait, you'll be almost sure to catch it. Denny! Well, hello there. Hello, Denny. Could I talk to you about something? It's terribly important. Oh, certainly. Go right ahead. Oh, but not here. Can't we find someplace that's quieter? Well, I guess so. Hop in. Thanks. How's this? It's about the quietest place in New York. Thanks, Denny. I know you're wondering what this is all about. Well, yes, to tell the truth, I, I am a little curious. I heard Claudius DeWolf's broadcast last night. So did I. He said you were with my husband. Denny, I've got to find him. Have you any idea where he is? Well, if he's drinking again, he could be in any one of 50 night spots. But last I saw him, he said he was going to a health farm to sober up. A health farm? Mm -hmm. Did he say which one? Mm, no, no, he didn't say that, but... Why, is old man Barrett kicking up a row again? Oh, it's much worse than that. He's getting a court order to take the baby. Well, your husband isn't going to hold still for that, is he? That's just the trouble. He doesn't know anything about it. That's why I've simply got to find him. Well, I know what I'd do if I were you. Denny, I'm desperate. I'll do anything. Well, the first thing you got to do is hide the baby. But where? Well, you must have a million friends the first place they'd look. Well, how about a nursery, then, or a hospital or something? I wouldn't dare. I'd be recognized. Mm -hmm. Well, then, here's your best bet. You find somebody that old man Barrett never suspects, see? And leave the baby with them until the whole thing cools off. In the meantime, you can, you can canvas every health farm in the state. So with the baby safely tucked away, they can serve papers on you until they're blue in the face. <laughs> they can't take away what you haven't got. Oh, Denny. I don't know how to thank you. Well, that's all right. Do you know somebody you can leave the baby with? Yes. Yes, I know someone. Uh, is there a telegraph office around here, any place? Oh, yeah, the uh, Hotel Greystone, about two blocks down there. Take me there, will you, please? Sure. Well, whatever happens, I wish you luck. Keep an eye on the baby. I'll only be a minute. Go ahead, take your time. Jeff, your passenger doesn't fall off the seat. Oh, there's one passenger I know hasn't been drinking. <laughs> Cute little devils remind me of my youngest. Your youngest? How many you got? Five, bless their hearts, the little darlings. I'd rather pat me right arm than any one of them. <laughs> you sound like my girl. But mind you. I wouldn't give the braid off my shoulder for another one. <laughs> now you sound like me. Will you call a taxi, please? Yes, ma'am. <whistles> yes, Jenny, me lad. But I went through with the last baby. I swore I'd never be a father again. <laughs> <laughs> you Denny Martin? Yeah, that's me. I have a telegram for you, sir. Me? You must have the wrong mark. I don't think so, sir. The lady said your cab would be parked outside the hotel. Yes. 
this. Well, get it out of there. You ought to know better. Yes, I'll, I'll get it out right away. Well, now what happens? I can't go driving around town with you in the back seat. One quick stop and you'd be on the floor. Isn't this awful? The cruising troubadour with a hot baby in his cab. Look at you. Do you care what a spot you've got me in? I suppose if you found me in the back seat of a cab and you were driving, you'd take care of me. <laughs> yes, you would. Fat chance. <laughs> and if you think that grin is going to get you anything, you're just wasting your time. Gee, I'd like to help you, but what can I do? You know, you could get me into a lot of trouble. You know as well as I do what the rule book says. Any valuable property found in a cab must be turned over to the police. And, baby, your valuable property. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Very funny to you, but not to me. <laughs> now, look, I'm going to do the sensible thing here. I don't want to do it because I'd like to help you out, but it's too dangerous. I'm going to take you down to the 47th Street Police Station. You'll like the boys down there. They're a nice bunch of coppers, and they'll treat you swell. They get you a great big police car, your own private siren, no stops for traffic lights, zoom, they'll take you home. <laughs> oh, that's just the trouble. They will take you home, won't they? <laughs> you know, you're probably looking at the biggest chump in the entire city of New York. I'm a fool, and I know it. Here I go stepping into something that figures to get me into nothing but trouble. But I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go up to my place and talk this thing over, huh? Okay. Hiya, Nicky. Hi, Denny. Any messages? No, Mary didn't call. Nicky, I've got a little surprise for you. Since I've taken up astrology, nothing surprises me anymore. I know everything that's going to happen. The future is always written plainly in the stars. Why, only this morning... Ah! Ah! Denny! Denny! Denny, look! Oh, here now. Take it easy. It isn't going to bite you. I know, but why? But who? But where? Oh, wait a minute. It's no mystery. I found the baby in my cab and brought it home. You brought it home? Huh? And you're the one who complained when I brought home a little goat. That's right. <laughs> well, what are you going to do with it? Um, well, that's what we're going to decide now. We mm -hmm. include me out of this. Oh, now, listen. We're pals, aren't we? But certainly. We live together, don't we? Well, in a way, yes. If you're in trouble, I'm in trouble. Is that right? That's right. And if I'm in trouble, you're in trouble, huh? Uh, absolutely. Well? I'm in trouble. There you are. Up we go. Oh, who'd think that such a big headache could come in such a small package, huh? It's a funny thing. Now I'm convinced. Just this morning, I was casting your horoscope for the day, yeah. and the star said that tonight, something embarrassing was going to happen. Hey, Nicky, be careful how you handle that baby now. Don't worry. In my family, there was so many children, my father didn't even know them all. Oh, I see. You've had experience, huh? Certainly. I raised three of my brothers from the cradle. Where are they now? I don't know. They're dead. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Can't you stop that crying? I'm not crying. It's the baby. You're crying. <laughs> I'm in trouble and you're crying. Chilla, bella, cassavita. Gonna be a la milova. I wanna invite me your posto pio. Will you be la na hu? Hey, 
what's that you're singing? It's a beautiful Russian lullaby. It's about a girl whose sweetheart leaves her, joins the army, and gets killed. So she jumps off the cliff. Give me that baby. You want the poor kid to have nightmares all night? Turn out the lights. Now listen here, young fella. It's getting pretty late. I think it's time that you turned off those tears. Perhaps you think you're different. I don't know, perhaps you think you rate. Or do you think you uh, grown up for your years? You better go to sleep, my fine young man. But if I can't convince you, someone can. That sly old gentleman from Featherbed Lane is watching you. He's peeking through your window pane. He's gathered sand from the skies that glitters and gleams. He'll sprinkle your eyes with dreams. He'll make your little heart so happy and gay. You'll ride a rocking horse along the Milky Way. Why stay away? Better take that slumber train with the sly old gentleman from Featherbed Lane. Good morning, Mr. Barrett. Well, well, what have you found out? She made a tour of the nightclubs asking for your son. Never mind about that. What did she do with the baby? We're still working on that, sir. She checked in at the Fabian Hotel, but she was alone. She must have left the child somewhere before we picked her up. Now, listen to me. I'm not interested in the woman. I'm not interested in reports. I'm only interested in one thing. Where is that baby? That's what I'm paying you to find out. Where is that baby? Nicky, Nicky. Yeah, what is it? Get the baby out of sight. Oh, well, good morning, Mrs. Lee. Good morning, Mr. Martin. Anything wrong? Yes, there is. Will you please tell your roommate, Mr. Bulabulikoff, to be more careful when he waters his plants in the morning? Well, what's the matter? Mrs. Watson, my tenant, downstairs hangs her parrot outside, right under those boxes. And the water dripping down has given the parrot such a cold he can't talk. I'll attend to the matter, Mrs. Lee. Well, see that you do. Yes. Yeah. Was that a close call? Why do you worry so much? Suppose she finds out we got a baby in here. Well, so what? So she finds out. So we moved to another place with a bigger garden. What kind of people can object to little plants and little babies? This doesn't happen to be an ordinary baby. Well, it looks ordinary to me. Nikki, I wasn't going to tell you this, but 
this baby happens to be the grandchild of Cyrus Barrett. <laughs> the grandchild of Cyrus Barrett. <laughs> the what? Now you understand why it has to be kept quiet. Now I understand why we'll be kept quiet for a long time if somebody finds out. Well, it's only for a couple of days. Now don't get so excited. <laughs> Where did you put it? To put what? Oh, yes, the baby. There you are, just like an Indian caboose. Hey, <laughs> Are you Daffy? Supposing he fell on his head or something. That's nothing. I fell on my head twice when I was a baby. Yeah, well, once was enough. There we are. Well, now what do you want? What's that? <laughs> Oh, I get it. You're hungry. Say, Nicky, what do we got to eat in the house? Everything. Here we got uh, chili, Welsh rarebit, pickles, Swiss cheese, and ah, beautiful salami. <laughs> salami. You can't give stuff like that to babies. They got to have milk and oatmeal. I'll climb into some clothes and go over to the grocery store. You just get the oatmeal and leave the milk to me. There we are. You stay right here now. The old milk train will be along any minute. I'll be back in a few minutes. While I'm gone, don't you let anybody in. Anybody, you understand? Am I gonna put my head in the lion's jaw when I know it's gonna clamp down on me? Hey. This meal comes to you for the courtesy of man's best friend, the cow. Who, who is it? It's Mary. Mary, well, uh, hello, Mary, how are you? How am I? Don't be ridiculous, open the door. The door? Well, uh, I can't right now. What do you mean you can't? I've come to cook breakfast. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but my suit is being pressed. Oh, don't be a fool. Put a robe on. My robe is being pressed, too. What's the matter with you? Where's Denny? Who? Where is Denny? Oh, oh you mean Denny. Well, well, he went out. He's gone out? When will he be back? He didn't say. Oh, you just don't make sense. When he comes back, tell him to phone me. See, baby, when you grow up and women come knocking at your door, that's the way to handle them. Well, I'll see you around, Harry. So long, Sam. So long. Oh, Daddy! Now, the first rule, baby, for success in life is to be careful of your appearance. So, la, voila. Hey, hey, hey. 
trying to do to the baby. This is the way I always play with babies. It is, huh? Well, I understand now what happened to your three brothers. I hurried just as fast as I could. Did you miss me, baby? I tried my best to be entertaining while you were gone. Yeah, but nobody knows how to treat you like I do. Do they, sweetheart? We'll have to make different arrangements for tonight, though. I hope so. I was very uncomfortable on that floor. Baby, you're going to have to go back to your other daddy soon because I'm getting married tonight. Is that a new hat, Mary? Yes, do you like it? It wouldn't look good on me. I didn't buy it for you. Calling Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook, please. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mr. DeWolf. Are you uh, happy, honey? Not particularly. Is that so? Well, there are only two troubles in life, love and money. I'm not broke, if that's what you mean. Am I to infer a cloud of dissension is darkening the sunshine of your romance? There is no romance. It's over. Have you left the cruising troubadour to cruise alone? He's not cruising alone. That's why I left him. Are you telling me he's acquired a new interest in life? I'm not telling you, but I can't keep you from guessing. Oh, never mind, Mary. One man's loss, another man's gain. A heartache for you, an item for me. Good night, Mr. DeWolf. Good night. Mary. Mary, I've been trying to get you all day. Must be something wrong with the switchboard, huh? Well, that's one nice thing about switchboards. When you don't want to talk to anyone, you just pull out the plug. Oh, I don't get it. Since when did you start pulling plugs on the groom? If you're a groom, you're somebody else's, not mine. Hey, wait a minute. Remember me? I'm the fellow you're going to marry tonight. Oh, no, you're not. This time I'm postponing the wedding. Permanently. Whoa, whoa. Now, what goes on here? This calls for a little explaining. I think you might do a little explaining. Such as what? Such as why Nicky wouldn't let me in this morning when I came up to surprise you. <laughs> you mean you came up and, and Nicky wouldn't let you in? Why, he never even told me. Oh, you can't laugh your way out of this. Now, look, Denny, I've always been fair with you. I didn't mind when you're out of work because I, I knew you were trying. I even put up with having our wedding postponed four times. But there's one thing I won't stand for. No woman would. And that's what happened this, this morning. Oh, honey, you shouldn't get burned up about a little thing like that. Little thing? Little thing? Do you think I enjoyed standing outside your door on my wedding day listening to you talk, baby talk to that, that woman? Oh, oh the old green-eyed monster, huh? You know you look cute when you're jealous, I'm honey. not jealous. I'm through, that's all. Come on, now, you're going along with me. I want you to meet somebody. I'm not going any place with you ever again. Ever. Hello, Mary. Oh, good evening. Your suit looks much better since you had it pressed. Well, I had to say something. Yeah, you think a great excuse as you do. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. But you told me not to let anybody in. Anybody? Well, Mary's not anybody. She's everybody. She can come up here anytime she wants, and don't you forget it. You know I think Mary's the most wonderful girl in the world. Why, if you had any idea at all of the way I feel about it. What's her... playing here next week? Uh, if you'll excuse me, now I'll go to work. <laughs> when this sun goes in, I go out. <laughs> oh. oh. She's a great fella. She'd do anything in the world for me. And do it wrong. Well, I'm waiting. Yes. Honey, I have a confession to make to you. I've got to tell you sooner or later. Might as well be now. I know you're big enough to understand when I tell you that someone else has come into my life. Now I want you to meet the person you heard me talking to this morning. Ah! Oh, Danny. A baby. You guessed it the first time. What's it doing here? Well, I'll tell you all about it later. I'm just doing a favor for somebody. Now, if you ask me in a real nice way, I, I might forgive you. Oh, Denny. Hello, honey. Oh, isn't he sweet? Look at these dear little hands. Oh, the size of the fingernails. That's what gets me. Did you ever see anything as small as that? 
Aren't you the man that didn't like babies? Well, yes. There uh, might be a lot of babies I wouldn't like. You can't tell. It's just like you, you meet a lot of people. Some you like and some you don't. This one I like, that's all. Oh, Denon, I wonder if we'll ever have it. I mean, I hope all our plans work out. Work out? Listen, honey, if I had my way, we'd have a... Well, there's lots of things I'd like you to have when the brakes come our way. You know, for a while, I thought maybe you didn't want to have it. Some people have funny ideas about things, don't they? Oh, yeah, but they get over them, too. Don't you think one baby gets kind of lonesome? Of course. They want company like everybody else. That's what I thought. You see, if I ever decide to have kids, I'm gonna have them all in a bunch. Well, there is something new under the sun after all. I imagine this is the first time a baby ever postponed a wedding. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'd make a pretty group, wouldn't we, with the best man holding him in his arms? Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Oh, no, you'll never get him to sleep that way. Oh, yes, I will. Now, if you want a lesson on how to put a baby to sleep, I'll show you. There we are. Come on. There we go. You can listen, too, if you want to, but you're supposed to stay away. Would you listen to a story? The most amazing story that you've ever heard. It concerns a certain romance, a most amazing romance. You'll have to take my word. It may sound unreal to you, but it's absolutely true. I know an angel on the east side of heaven who lives in a third-story room. We meet on a rooftop and dream in the dark when the lights of New York are in blue. All through the daytime, it's the same old Manhattan, but evening again sets me free. Then I turn off Broadway to the east side of heaven where an angel waits for me. Any news? Yes, Mr. Barrett. It's about your daughter-in-law. Oh. What about her? Well, two of my most experienced men trailed her from her hotel to Pennsylvania Station. Now, you know, Mr. Barrett, what a big place that is, and there were hundreds of people there, and... You mean to say you've lost track of her? Oh, I hate to admit it, Mr. Barrett, but that's what happened. Ah! What kind of detectives are these? <laughs> well, if that's the best you can do, it isn't good enough. Send your bill to Mr. Fisher. Yes, sir. Right this way, gentlemen. Laugh to say. I'm worried. Call the police, sir. It's the only proper thing to no, do. No, 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 no. The publicity. I... This is not a time for personal pride, sir. As long as we knew where your daughter-in-law was, there was still a chance of finding the baby. But now, maybe in actual physical danger. His very life may be at stake. Call the police commissioner. Good, sir. Ah. Never before has one breath of scandal touched the family name of Barrett. The name of Barrett has not appeared in the public prints recently, and my operators tell me that young Cyrus Barrett is no longer seen frequenting his favorite haunts of gaiety, all of which leads us to believe that his current domestic difficulties have impressed him deeply. And descending a rung or two in the social ladder, it may be amusing to note that Barrett's favorite crooner, Denny Martin, the cruising, ear-bruising troubadour, has blown out an old flame. But Martin at least was fortunate. He has already found himself a new baby. And from what I hear, some baby. And that, fair listeners, must satisfy you.
remember one thing. If anybody asks you, do you know me, go like this. <laughs> well, well, well. How's the little mother? Any word yet? Any word yet? Did you hear the Wolf's broadcast? I'm not interested in the Wolf's broadcast. Oh, you'll be interested in this one. He just told the whole world you got a baby here. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, maybe I don't, but I know what the Wolf was talking about. We just heard him, didn't we? Well, what did he say? He said you found a baby. Well, that's impossible. How could he know that? You didn't tell him, did you? Listen, last night a fellow asked me what time it was, and I wouldn't tell him. Yeah, I can't understand it. How did he say it? He just said that you blowed out an old flame and that you already found yourself a new baby. Oh, <laughs> I might have known it. You get everything wrong. Well, what do you mean? Well, I guess Mary told him she heard me talking to a girl up here. And that's DeWolf's cute way of saying it. Well, you know that he meant a girl, and now I know that he meant a girl. But DeWolf said baby. Well, so what? So what is he, the Lone Ranger? <laughs> well, you might be right at that. Now, I'd better see Mary and make sure she doesn't tell DeWolf anything else. Duck out of here. Yes? Are you Denny Martin? That's right. I'm Detective Lieutenant Finnegan from Bureau of Missing Persons. Uh -huh. Maybe you can help me out a little. Well, sure. Come right in. Thanks. You drive for Sunbeam, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. This mean anything to you? Well, sure, that picture's on all the front pages. She's the lady who's missing. Ever see her before? <laughs> I'll say I did. I had her in my cab a couple nights ago. Where'd you pick her up? Cruising around the Raleigh Hotel. The Raleigh Hotel? Uh -huh. Well, that's very helpful. Oh, did she have the kid with her? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, she did. Where'd you drop her? Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, I haven't got my book with me, but... Oh, I remember now. I. I let her out at the Greystone Hotel. Well, do you remember what time it was? Well, I wouldn't want to swear to it, but I think it was between 9 and 10. Well, thanks, Martin. Is that all you can tell me? Yes, that's, that's all I can tell you. OK, if we need you again, we'll send for you. Well, I'll be glad to do anything I can. Good night. Good night. Goodbye, baby. Here, what's the idea? You mean you're not going to take him home now? You think I'm crazy? I couldn't walk two blocks with that kid. Carry him. Oh, will you stop with that stuff? But, Denny, with every policeman in New York looking for this baby, the radio and the newspapers will make a federal project out of it. Don't you realize we're in a real jam? Sure, we're in a jam, but it's not as bad as you make out. We'll be out of it as soon as Miss Barrett shows up and takes her baby away. Well, suppose she doesn't show up. Now, will you stop worrying? It'll work out all right. Well, that's what they said to the Tsar. And then came the revolution. Now, well, we haven't done anything wrong. We got a perfect explanation of why the baby's here. I know Mrs. Barrett. She asked me to take care of her baby, and I'm doing it. Now, they can't do anything to us for that. With that alibi, no jury in the world will give us more than 10 years. You got to get them out of here. Now, listen. This baby is not leaving the house tonight in my company. The first cop that saw me would pick me up. What's the difference? You said you could explain. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather sleep here tonight than in the pokey. Anyhow, we're in this deep. We might as well see it through. Besides, Mrs. Barrett will be along any minute now. That'll solve everything. If she doesn't come by tomorrow, I'll go to old man Barrett. If she doesn't come by tomorrow, Alcatraz, I hear you calling. business. With all these coals around, we're doing a lovely little business this week. <laughs> you can thank the weatherman for that. <laughs> Isn't it so? Why, Mr. Fredericks in 712 has the worst cold you ever saw. Really? Uh, Mr. DeWolf, here's some company. Ah, oh, there, Mary. Good morning. Are you uh, happy, honey? Yes. No thanks to you. 
What did I do? Oh, nothing. You just broadcast to the whole world that Denny and I had split up, that's all. What'll it be, Mary? I'm skipping lunch, just a chocolate malt, please. Well, why all the fuss because I said Denny had found a new baby? Maybe I wasn't so far wrong. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't it funny? I broadcast that the cruising troubadour has found a new baby. And two days later, presto, out crops the news he's actually had the Barrett baby in his cab. <laughs> That's very amusing. What's startling about that? Taxis carry hundreds of people. I don't think it's even interesting. That's because you're not a radio reporter. But I, Mary, am very much interested. Toodaloo. Apparently, taxi driver Martin was the last person to have seen Mrs. Barrett and her baby together. Baby, you got us into plenty of trouble. Yeah, trouble is right. I had no idea to go this far. Yeah, if the police catch up with us and can go farther than this, we better think of something and think of it fast. Well, I've done all I could for Mona, but I've got a strange feeling something's gone wrong somewhere. Yeah, you said it. I think I'll go see old man Barrett. Now you're talking. And get this straight. If that dick comes back, you play dumb, you hear? I'll try, but I'm not a very good actor. Well, you don't have to be for that part. No. <laughs> What's that? Yes, yeah, yes, 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 of course. Good afternoon, Mr. Barrett. Now listen, young man, don't you start singing. No, no chance. There'll be no singing today. I came to do you a favor. Hmm. What is it? Well, if somebody came to do me a favor, I'd ask him to sit down. Have a seat. You know, you've got a wonderful grandson, Mr. Barrett. It's a great baby. Would you mind coming to the point? Your son's all right, too. Of course, he's gone a little haywire lately, but that's your fault. What is this all about? Well, I'm coming to that. Just let me have my say first. You know, you started all this by breaking up your son's marriage. You caused a lot more trouble by trying to take your daughter-in-law's baby away from me. That's enough. Now, you had me thrown out of here once. Don't do it again if you want your grandson back. What's that? Do you know where he is? Well, I could take you to him in 15 minutes, but we got to settle something first. How much do you want? How much you got? Well, never mind, Mr. Baird. Everybody doesn't think in terms of money. I guess you found that out since you lost your grandson. I'm not much in the world, according to your standards, and you're a pretty big man, but I know when I'm right and you're wrong. Oh, for heaven's sake, man, if you know where the baby is, take me to him. Maybe I have been wrong, but I've suffered for it. I'll do anything to get that baby back. Anything. All right, then. Let your son and his wife lead their own lives. Give them a chance to make a go of it. Very well, I will. Okay, come on. Has the little fellow been taken care of? Oh, is he well? He's sharp as a tack. I'll explain the whole thing on the way down. Fine. I'll see that you're well rewarded for this, Martin. Don't worry about that. There's nothing I want. Well, we'll talk about that later. Nicky! Nicky, I brought Mr. Barrett. Here you are, Mr. Barrett. Here's your baby. <coughs> Nicky, what happened? There's an act at the door and someone has got telegrams. Wait a minute, wait. Now go ahead. Oh, what happened? Yeah. There was a knock at the door and somebody said telegram. I opened the door, put out my head, something hit me, and there I was, looking at the stars again. Well, who did it? I don't know who did it. Now, listen, Martin. I don't know what your game is, but you can't get away with it. You told me I had my grandson, and I think you did. We'll see what the police have to say about it. And if you're responsible, I won't rest till you're both in the penitentiary, where you belong. Well, wait a minute. Mr. Barrett, please, you got to listen. Now what are we going to do? Well, Barrett will go straight to the police. There's only one thing for us to do, get out of town. But we're innocent. That's what the fellow said when they hung him. But we didn't do anything. All we did was try to help somebody out. All we did is lose the Barrett baby, that's all. And that's going to take some tall explaining. Come on. Where are we going, brother? We're just going, that's all. Well, I'm busy, madam. Well, what, Mary? Will you tell 402 the papers aren't in yet? You know, there's some mighty queer goings on in this hotel. Can you imagine what that DeWolf has ordered? No, what? A baby hamper, a nursing bottle, and malted milk. And for a bachelor, too. I'll tell Raleigh. Come on, Denny, sing us a chord. A little later. Just a moment, please. Hello, Denny. What's the matter? I got something to tell you, and I don't want it overheard. I just dropped in to say goodbye. Goodbye? Where are you going? Well, I got to leave town. Leave town? 
What for? Because Nikki and I are liable to be pinched any minute. But any minute? Pinched? Why? Because of what happened with Nikki this morning. For heaven's sakes, what happened? Well, I, I brought old man Barrett to get the baby, and there was no baby. Somebody took it. Somebody took it? Who'd do a thing like that? I don't know, and I'm not waiting to find out. Just a minute. Come on out here. What is it? Did you ever hear of anyone drinking gin out of a nursing bottle? Now, honey, this is no time to be kidding. No? Well, listen. Claudius DeWolf just bought a baby hamper and a nursing bottle. He did? Yeah, well, they smoked this fire, and with his nursing bottles, there must be babies. But what in the world would DeWolf want with a Barrett baby? Well, I don't know, but let's find out. Listen, Mary, you go up to his room. He'll let you in, won't he? I think so. Okay, give me a little time and then see that his radio is tuned to WIX. I got an idea. <laughs> what is it? You wait here. Bobby, ask one of the boys to relieve me for a few minutes, will you? Sure. I can handle that chorus now. Fine, Danny. That sly old gentleman from Feather Bed Lane is watching you peeking through your window pane. Why, Mary. I just wanted to tell you to be sure and heat the milk before you give it to the baby. What? And don't forget to sterilize the bottle. Come in, Mary. By what powers of detection did you divine that I was entertaining an infant? Try and keep a secret in a big hotel. <laughs> I have tried before, but with no success. This time, it's a harmless secret. Not even any scandal. Hardly, unless the scandal said I should be taking care of my sister's baby. Oh, may I see it? Oh, no, no. We mustn't disturb the slumbers of the innocent. Uh, would you care for a drink? No, thank you. Do you mind if I have one? Not at all. Thank you. My old gentleman from Feather Bed Lane. We interrupt this program to make an important news announcement. Flash, the Barrett baby, grandson of Cyrus Barrett, was found ten minutes ago and restored to his grandfather. For further details, see your evening newspaper. Oh, thank heavens. I'm so glad that baby's all right. What's the matter with you? Don't you feel well? I don't feel anything. I'm numb. Why? I got the wrong baby. I don't understand that your sister's, isn't it? I wish to heaven it were. Will you stop being so mysterious and tell me what it's all about? Mary, I was going to pull the biggest scoop of my career. I was going to hand the baby back to Mr. Barrett tonight at the broadcasting station. Even telephoned him and told him to be there. Whose child is it? Where'd you get it? Well, I suppose I might as well tell you. After I talked to you this morning, I decided Denny must have the Barrett kid, so I sent a friend of mine to investigate. He found this brat in Denny's apartment and brought it here. A baby in Denny's apartment. <laughs> Well, there's nothing funny about this. You've got the landlady's baby. What? Yes. Nikki minds it for her every day when she goes out shopping. <laughs> Mary, you can do me a big favor. I'll do one for you someday. Take that kid back to the landlady and tell her you had it out for an airing. Tell her anything, but get it out of here. Well, I don't know. Mary, you will do this for me. I know you will. There's no time to lose, Mary. Maybe you can get it back before she misses it. All right, but I wouldn't do this for anybody else. Mary, I'll never forget you for this. I know you won't. Thank you, Freddie. Okay. Here it is. Calling Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson, please. That's our baby. What? We got it back again? Denny, it worked out perfectly. As soon as he heard the broadcast, he told me where he got the baby. Never mind about that now. What we got to do is get the baby home to Mr. Barrett as soon as possible. The cops don't get us first. But Mr. Barrett's going to be at the broadcasting station. Claudius was going to meet him there. Oh, he was, was he? Going to make a big hero out of himself, huh? Well, DeWolf's been pushing me around long enough. Now it's my turn. Hotel Raleigh. Who's calling, please? Just a minute. It's Barrett calling DeWolf. Hello, DeWolf. 
My secretary tells me you want me to meet you at your broadcast. May I ask what for? Well, Mr. Barrett, I thought I had some important information about your grandson, but uh, since you have him back, I guess there's very little more for me to say. Have him back? What are you talking about? You mean the baby wasn't returned to you? Returned to me? Of course not. Look, Mr. Barrett, you meet me at the broadcasting station and I'll try to explain everything there. Just a moment. It's DeWolf. Yes, Mr. DeWolf. Mary, I'm glad I got you in time. There's been a mistake somewhere. Now wait for me and I'll be right down. He's coming right down. What do we do now? Oh, think fast, Danny. Think fast. Oh, for Mr. Stort. Mr. Stort, please. Mary, I decided it wouldn't be fair to let you do this. I'll take the child back myself. But I thought you it's said... It's all right. Uh, boy, thanks just the same, Mary. Yes, sir. Uh, carry this out for me and carry it very carefully. Yes, sir. You and your boyfriend thought you were being very smart, didn't you? Well, it might interest you to know that I've been on to you all the time. Nobody can put anything over on me. Toodaloo. Don't worry, dear. He's probably up in the nursery. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Higgins says Mr. Martin brought my baby home. No, ma'am. I knew something was wrong when there was nobody at Denny's flat. Is my father home? No, sir. He's on his way to the Federal Broadcasting Station. Broadcasting Station? What for? Something about the infant, sir. Mr. DeWolf called him. Come on, darling. Good evening, fair listeners. This is your Manhattan mentor, Claudius DeWolf, bringing you the news flash of the century. The mystery of the missing Barrett baby has been solved. While the entire police department combed the city and failed, while every force of law and order searched fruitlessly for the son of Cyrus Barrett, Jr., I, your humble reporter, alone and unaided, accomplished what hundreds of others have failed to do. I, ladies and gentlemen, found the Barrett baby. But before I give you the details of this amazing story, I'm going to restore the child to the waiting arms of his anxious grandfather, who is expected here at any moment. Oh, just a second. Here comes Mr. Barrett now. Mr. Barrett, your worries are over. Here is your grandson. Are you happy, honey? Mr. Barrett, I don't know how this happened. Don't I... you? The wolf, are you trying to make a fool of me? Of course not, Mr. Barrett. I can't understand this. Neither can I. I want this man arrested. Mr. Barrett, please give me a chance to explain. I don't know. There's the man you want arrested. Ah, oh, there you are. Now, take it easy, Mr. Barrett. There's your grandson. We'd have had him long before this if it hadn't been for gorgeous Claudius. I don't know what you're all trying to do, but I want everyone held for investigation. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, Dad. Charles! Listen, Dad, you don't want to have this man arrested. He's the man that took the baby. Oh, no, he isn't. I left him with Denny while I went looking for Cyrus. I can never thank you enough. Well, I guess that lets me out. It certainly does. Out of a job. Mr. Barrett, you can't do a thing like that. You had the baby today and you didn't tell me. The wolf, you're through. Play something, boys. Do you people realize we're on the air? How are we doing? Dad, give Denny a chance. He's earned one. Martin, if you want that job, <laughs> you can have it for life. <laughs> now go and sing your head off. Right over here, please. Well, I don't know. This is kind of sudden. I feel sort of funny without my cab. Go ahead, Dad. Oh, I... Go on. Wait a minute. He sings much better with a baby in his arms. Hurry up, honey. Because when you hear the gong, it'll be two minutes before our wedding. An angel on the east side of heaven. No wonder I'm happy and free. When I turn off Broadway to the east side of heaven, where an angel. 